Science into operations with the Saskatchewan Science Center. Hi, Ryan. Hey, Bob. Nice to see you. I regularly ride my bike past past your sign on Broad Street. Do you think it brings in a lot of people? I think it does. Yeah, that sign is right on the corner, and I think a lot of cars drive past there, and it's a really big sign. Also, some of those things on the sign are super funny. Anyways, whose idea was it for the IMAX Beavers marketing? It is hilarious. The tagline, you like that? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that the Beaver movie was actually made in the 1980s, and that was the marketing tagline that, that they came up with for the film. I think it's really funny. Out of all the IMAX movies playing right now, which is your favorite? Well, I I love space movies, so I think probably Asteroid Hunters, which is also our, our the newest movie that we have, I think that's my favorite. Uh, but the other two movies that we're showing are also very, very, very good. So. Yeah. I mean, we already covered Beavers, but we have yet to get to the next one. <laughs> which movie? Which movie would you recommend for younger audiences? I would say definitely Beavers. So it's a little bit shorter than some of our other movies. I mean, it's, if it's good and short, yeah. then it's better and then not so interesting than Mom. It's also really, really cute. You can see all of these beavers and they're okay. like chewing on the trees. And I bet you don't know the sound that a beaver makes because I had no idea how what sounds a beaver made. Okay, I really, I really want to go. I really want to go see that. What social distancing measures have you made? Well, you know, we've we've absolutely followed all of the rules. So two meter distancing That's and great. mandatory. Um, capacity limits and that kind of thing. We've done some few other things as well. We've gone to timed admissions in the Science Center and uh, you have to ask the people book in advance and then you stay for a period of time and then we do a whole uh, bunch of cleaning and disinfecting in between um, between the groups of people. So it's worked really well for us and um, I think when the restrictions lift a little bit later on in July, I actually think that we'll keep a lot of those same things in place. Yeah. Um, just to keep everybody safe. A lot of people that visit the Science Center are under 12 years old and there's no vaccine for those kids yet. So we'll still be making sure that it's a very safe and uh, environment for everybody. Yeah, I think that, like, I think it's great that you have extra measures because then nobody gets sick and it's just, I think that that's amazing. Yeah, well, the Science Center is all about getting your hands on things, right? So there's a lot yeah, of touching. Yeah, so there's, so. like, there's a lot of touching. What was it like interviewing John Harrington? Oh, it was so cool. So I mentioned earlier that I really love space stuff. And so I've always really looked up to astronauts and to be able to talk to one uh, and just ask him all kinds of questions. It was it was really exciting. And he's he's in one of our other IMAX movies, which is I was about to get there. Yeah. The third one that we still have as we've mentioned yet, yeah. is Into Nature's Wild. So is it still playing, right? Yep, absolutely. It's still here. It's a great summer movie because it's all about getting outside and into nature. I mean, well, it has the entire one. Like, <laughs> oh yeah, we're staying indoors for the whole time movie. <laughs> it's kind of funny that you're coming inside to watch a movie about going outside. Yeah. But you have to come and watch the movie so that you're inspired to go on an adventure outside. Yeah. Right. How is Bubo the Owl doing? In what, like, what happened when the renovations were happening? Yeah, Bubo had a really exciting winter. So, first of all, we found out that Bubo was a girl. So that was exciting because we didn't really know. Which sounds kind of strange, but with owls and some other raptors, it's actually not very easy to yeah. find out. So, so we found out that, that Bubo was a girl. And then That's she went on a vacation to Moose Jaw for a lot of the winter. Because we were doing a whole bunch of renovations here, and we actually ended up renovating her habitat. And so um, she was spending some time moose at the Burrowing Owl Center. And then now she's back here for everybody to come and see. And yeah, she's back here. Where does the Lego exhibit come from? Like yeah, these. so the Lego exhibit, which is called Towers of Tomorrow, it has 20 um, scale models of some of the world's most famous towers. And yeah. they're all the same scale. They're one to 200. 
And it was built by somebody named Ryan McNaught. So like all of these? All of these, yep. Yeah. He's a Lego certified okay. professional from Australia. These were in Vancouver. Uh, and then when they finished with it, the Vancouver Science Center, then they came here. And we had a different Lego science certified centers? professional. Are they like these ones? Oh, they're all, all kind of different. Depends where you go. Was it hard to get the Saskatchewan Lego users group involved? They were really excited. So the, oh. the Lego certified professional that came uh, to install these, he didn't he didn't build the towers, but he came to install them for us. He was from Vancouver, and he had really good connections with the different Lego user groups across Canada. And so they were kind of talking back and forth, and then we reached out to them because they've done a lot of work with us in the past as well. And, and when we told them what was happening, they were really, really excited to come out and uh, to become a part of it. Yeah, a part of those towers of tomorrow? Yeah. I think I remember you like seeing a sort of uh, vagina section. That was fun. Yeah, so that's I... what the slum, the Saskatchewan Lego user group, they are every month they're building, um, they have a little micro exhibit kind of in the front entrance of the Science Center. And yeah. um, this month they have a bunch of uh, vagina buildings. Yeah. Yeah, I saw the one Milky Way one and it was just, it's just. If it's the summertime, the only two things that you really need are the Science Center and ice cream. How many pieces of Lego are in the Science Center right now? I mean, it might be hard to narrow, narrow it down, but... Hey. I can tell you almost exactly. So there are about 600,000 pieces of Lego in the towers, and then there's 200,000 pieces of Lego for people to build with when they come here. So there are wow, about 800,000 pieces of Lego in this building right now. Hey, maybe you get two of those stations, now you have one million. Not at all. Maybe, I have some in my office too, but not very much, not 200,000 pieces. Has anyone stepped on it? <laughs> because we're talking about Lego here. Yes. It's painful to step on, nobody wants to step on it. Mm -hmm. Unless you're doing like a world record or something. I don't think anybody has stepped on it yet, but maybe people will hide Lego in the carpet or something. I hope they Crank. don't, but you never know, right? We've not been to the Science Center since before COVID. What else has happened? Well, a lot of stuff has happened. So we started um, a big renovation project. Um, our big space stadium stage is gone now, and we've got new carpet and a bunch of new paint, and we've got a whole bunch of plans for new exhibits and even more new things coming in the I'm next looking, couple of years. I'm looking forward to that. For summer, what can kids expect for camps and other activities? Because so we do have a few cool things coming up. We are going to have in-person day camps again this summer. And uh, that information will be on our website now. They'll just be I in think August. I remember one. Yeah. And uh, the other thing that we're doing that I think is going to be really interesting is we're doing, uh, for New Year's, we did a kit called the Out of the Box New Year's Eve. And for the summer, we have an Out of the Box Outdoor Science Kit. So I think I saw that on the website. Yeah, it's a big box, and there's 11 and science activities in it. And you don't need any internet or anything for it. So you can you can buy the box and then you can, wherever you go, if it's your campground or grandparents or just in your own backyard, you can do all these cool science things. Hey, you can be stranded in the woods and, and you can, hey, you can be stranded in the woods and you can still do this there. Exactly. That's right. Well, thank you. To, thank you for talking to us. It is my pleasure. Thank you for visiting. Well, I'm glad to visit. It's just like an endless cycle of thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.